Ladies and gentlemen, there's something that plagued the Forex industry that I want to talk about today, and it's Forex indicators. Of course, before we get into it, today's video is all about the actual strategy behind an indicator that hundreds have used on a daily basis. And you guys have seen example after example after example of this indicator winning trades and showing people how to win in the markets with no strategy behind it. It's an indicator that has a pre-given entry point, predetermined stop loss level, a break even level, and a target level. And with adjustments in settings and adjustments in RSI levels, we can then increase or decrease our win rate and we can back test those things to see how we are doing. But indicators aren't all they're cracked up to be. A lot of people scroll through YouTube and they see video after video after video, different people saying how much money they made with this one indicator and showing massive results with a thumbnail or something that's almost causing clickbait. And what's causing people to believe in them is these videos. And what's causing people to then fall for them are these videos. And in today's video, I want to show you guys the actual strategy behind this indicator so that you can know what the manual strategy is that makes this indicator work. Now, first and foremost, I want you to understand that there are three basic concepts of this indicator. The Asian range trend, the location of the EMAs, and the RSI level. If you can understand where these levels are and you can learn how to read these levels, you're going to understand how to take a trade, how to exit a trade, and how to move stops to break even. But there are also some very common myths about indicators that they can change your life and they're the easiest things and you can copy and paste and the reality is 99% of that is a lie it doesn't exist and you have to stop chasing that idea you have to become an independent trader and the way to do that is to understand the strategies behind the indicator so that you can tweak and adjust settings to become a better trader get a higher win ratio and therefore hopefully increase your probability now the reason for this is because Indicators are lagging. Indicators are based off of past data. When you think about the indicator that you're learning about today, it's based off of RSI levels and Asian ranges and EMA, all of which are based off of what happened in the past. Every single reading of the indicator is looking at what happened in the past. There is no indicator that can successfully predict what will happen in the future. Everybody would be using that. And that's some sort of magic eight ball that simply does not exist. But here's the trick. If you can learn how the indicator actually works, you can increase your win rate, increase your profitability, and hopefully make yourself into a profitable trader with the indicator. That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Number one, if you can, please click a like button because right now we're on a goal and a goal is to get to 200 likes every single video on this indicator. So if you could click the like button for learning everything you need to know about this indicator for free. Also down below in the description, you will see a log or a form to actually input your information and I will add this indicator to your TradingView platform. We have a playlist available as well that's going to enable you to see all of these videos in order and also learn about how to access this indicator, how to set up the settings, and really how to view it from an overall perspective. So these are the things I want you guys to do. Can you get this video to 200 likes? Let's hit the computer screen and start talking about this indicator. All right, so now we're on the computer screen. You can see that I've got the indicator up on the top left corner. What I want you guys to do is exit it, get rid of it. Get rid of everything on your screen. Your goal right now is to simply have price and nothing else on the screen. Because what I wanna show you is the actual information that creates the indicator. What is the strategy behind the indicator? Now, number one, you're gonna to have to have multiple indicators on this. So those of you guys that have free trading views may have trouble following along, just FYI on that if you don't currently pay for at least a $15 TradingView plan. Now, I'm not currently a sponsored with TradingView. I don't get paid by saying that, but it will help in that case. So step number one is getting the indicators loaded up. So you're gonna come up here to the indicator tab and make sure you're on the 15 minute time frame. And when you go up here to the tab, you're gonna type in RSI and you're gonna click the top one that's titled Relative Strength Index. Now, the good news about that one is you don't need to change anything. It's simply gonna pop on the bottom of your screen and you're done. The second one, you're gonna type in sessions and you're gonna click the one that says sessions, Asia, London, New York colored, used for GMT. Great. Now what you're going to do is add DeLorean EMAs. You're gonna search and it's gonna say DeLorean EMAs. Once you have done that, you have successfully found yourself all of the indicators needed in order to look for a trade opportunity very similar to what you guys will see inside of the strategy. Now, as a reminder of the strategy, 
you can come up to your invite only scripts after you have access and it'll say Patrick's Asian session script. And when you add it to the charts, you guys will see right here, right here, all of the different things of different entries and things like that. Now today's video is not about settings, it's not about optimization, it's simply about how does this call a short entry here? What does it do to do it? So let's talk about that in today's video. Let me get rid of that indicator and let's take a look at this. And we understand right here that it called a short entry. So let's get a list together. How does it call an entry? Number one, first and foremost, it only looks to enter trades in London or New York sessions. In this case, you can see that the Asian session is in blue in the center of your screen. We will never see a trade entered in that session. We could certainly have a trade held through the session from a previous day's entry, but we will never see a trade entered in that session. Now, we know that the entry happens in London or New York session, but how is the entry determined? Well, it starts with the trend. Now the trend has to do with these three EMAs. EMA number three, EMA number four, and EMA number five. In this case, EMA number three is the aqua, number four is the gray, number five is the blue. I'm gonna to refer to those as the aqua, the gray, and the blue. Now, your goal is to get these three in that order. Aqua, gray, blue. It's called AGB, aqua, gray, blue. Those being in that order determines a trend. If it's out of that order, you have no trend. Now, how we determine trend is very simple. In this case, you've got the aqua below the gray, below the blue. If you have the aqua below the gray, below the blue, that means we are in what's called a bearish trend or a downtrend. When we are in a bearish trend or a downtrend, the indicator will only look for sell positions. On the flip side of that coin, we could click through really quick and you could find a scenario where you have the aqua above the gray and above the blue. When the aqua is above the gray and above the blue, that is what's called a bullish trend or an uptrend. And in that case, we are only looking for buy positions. Now the third scenario is where they're mixed up. In this case, you've got gray, aqua, blue. If that is the case, there is simply no trend. If that is the case, there is simply no entry. Whenever you have the aqua, the gray, and the blue out of order, you do not look for a trade in that area. So as I go back here to one of these scenarios, I wanna make sure I'm on a, a screenshot that has a scenario enabled that's recent. Uh, let's look at uh, Euro Swiss here, or actually let's look at let's look at Pound Cat, something that recently the indicator called, and I want to make sure you guys can see why the indicator called it, which matters a little bit less to the indicator itself, but it matters more to the strategy. So let's get rid of that. So the first thing I want you guys to understand is that you need to silo yourselves for this manual strategy. What I mean by silo yourselves is you only want to pay attention to what happens in the blue. Almost pretend that nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is this blue. And you have to ask yourself a couple different questions. The first question you have to ask yourself is what is the trend, which you just learned how to define. You have to have an aqua gray blue in that order where the aqua is either on the bottom or the aqua is the, on the top. In this case, you can see the aqua is on the top. That means we have what's called a bullish trend. We are only looking to buy. On the flip side, if we had the aqua on the bottom like we did in a minute ago, we would only look to sell. So in this case, we are only looking to buy. That is step number one. Inside of my silo of blue, do I have aqua over gray over blue? Or aqua under gray under blue? One of those examples. Now, the second step is understanding, do I have a pullback in the range? So in this case, I'm a bullish pattern. That means my chart is generally going up. 
So I'm looking for the market to pull back so that I can buy the pullback and that it continues with the trend. This is a trend trading strategy. So take a look at this. The next step after my silo of aqua, aqua gray and blue is asking myself, okay, is the aqua session bullish or bearish? Now in the case of the overall trend with the aqua gray and blue, the aqua is above the gray and the blue, which means we are bullish. But the second step is if you're bullish, you must have a bearish blue range. You must have a bearish Asian session. That means when the chart enters the session right here and the chart exits the session right here, that must be bearish in order to get the second check for the indicator to say, yes, this is a good opportunity. In this case, we do. We get that second check. And so it, it says to itself, yes, we've got number one, we're with the trend. Number two, it's pulling back. It wants it to pull back. That is the second step of the indicator. Step number three, it wants to ensure that the RSI goes oversold. Now the RSI is oversold in the case of a bullish session, in a bullish trend, excuse me. And it's overbought in the case of a bearish trend. So in this case, we have a bullish trend. We want the RSI to become oversold. Notice the RSI becomes oversold. That is your step number three out of your four steps. So now we have a bullish trend. Then we have a bearish pullback. Then we have an RSI oversold. The last step is simply looking for an entry. Now an entry is based off of a shift candle. A shift candle is simply when the yellow EMA crosses the red EMA. In this case, you can see that the yellow EMA, when it pulls back, it's below. You need it to cross above to signal that you're ready to buy. So in this case, you can see that happens right in here. That is where your entry area lands. Why? Because the yellow crossed above the red. So in that case, if we were to look at this, we would be able to then say, this is right here, entry area. Why? Because we had the shift and we followed the other steps. The second step is, where is my stop loss? Well, it's at the lowest part of the day in the case of a buy. It's at the highest part of the day in the case of a sell. So my stop is down here somewhere at this low. My third step is where is my target going to be? And it's going to be at the one to two risk to reward ratio every single time. At least that's the standard out the box settings with this indicator. So this is effectively what my trade is going to look like if I were to manually be looking for this position. Now, if I were to go to the indicator and hit play, take a quick look when I hide what I just did. It matches it, doesn't it? Hit control Z again. Look at that. It matches it. It is the same position because it's based off a specific set of parameters that no question are passing in this case. And as long as the indicator passes those settings and it passes the trend setting, it knows where the Asian range is, it knows where the RSI is, it gets a shift, it is going to call a trade with the stop loss at the low, the entry right here, the break even at one to one, and the target at one to two. And in this case, it's already successfully hit one to one, pulled back, it's in profit, and hopefully it gets to target number two, which is full take profit of a one to two risk to reward ratio. So every single time that you guys sift through this and you look at positions, you can now understand, let's look at another one, why it's entering the trade. So if I were to get rid of this one, let's look at this. Let's look at the silo again. Pretend you're in the silo. The blue area is the silo. 
Now, as I'm in that silo, I ask myself the first question, do I have an aqua gray blue in that order? Yes. I have aqua below gray, below blue. That means we are in a selling trend, a bearish trend. So we are looking for pullbacks to sell. The second step is am I pulling back in the opposite direction, the Asian range. In this case, if we're going in a bearish direction, the Asian range needs to be bullish. It enters here, it exits right there. That is a bullish range. That means the range went higher, even though there's a lot of noise here, it did go higher during that time. My third step, at any point before entry, whether it's in the range or in London, does the RSI become, in this case, overbought because we are looking to sell? The answer is yes. It becomes overbought right down here. And the fourth step, do we have a shift? And the shift must happen after the Asian range. It must happen in London or New York. It cannot happen in Asian range. If it does, it will not call the position. And the answer, of course, is undoubtedly yes. It crosses right in here. And so at that point in time, this is the high of the day up here to the left. I make sure that my stop loss level sets there. I make sure that my target level sits at a one to two. And if I were to drag this across and then turn on the indicator again, look what happened. It's at the same exact level again. So that is how you guys are able to manage and look at these positions. Now that you understand why it's calling the trade, I hope that you can now look at things a little bit differently to increase your win ratios. So that does it for this video. What you guys need to understand is that indicators have been marketed to the public and a lot of naive people as the one fits, one size fits all approach to trading. It's not the case. You must understand the strategy behind the indicator to have a better edge in the market. Now, the better you understand the strategy behind the indicator, now you can go out there and change the settings. Now you can go and manipulate the indicator to provide you better results or results that you like better or you perceive as better. So remember guys, the goal on this video is 200 likes. If we receive 200 likes, the next video I will show you not only how to utilize this indicator even more, but I will show you guys how to create alerts directly to your phone whenever this indicator passes that Asian range steps and it has not entered yet. That way you have a warning sign and you can get prepared for a position, do some last minute studying, look at it, do some cross checks and make sure that you want to enter that position based off of the parameters. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you as always for clicking that subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.